uh, what do I love about the library? I love books. I love books. I, uh, I think they saved my life. Things I love about the library is it has so many different books and it has so many fun things to do. I really love my library and want to make sure that it's successful. I love the library because I use it for so many different things. Um, yeah, I just, I love the library. I'm glad that we have it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear library. associate with libraries, a place that has an extensive collection of books uh, that help us to know more about the world and uh, read and be inspired, uh, learn things that send us off in directions that we might never have imagined. Um, but increasingly, of course, in this generation, um, also a, a wide range of ways to connect electronically uh, with the world. Um, we also have an extensive collection of art, uh, both historic and fine art, and art that's being um, created right now by young people and all people in our community. Um, so it's, it's a place that represents um, not just knowledge and experience, um, but, but also, and importantly, um, a place that we come together, not just to celebrate, like today, the library itself, um, but for all different kinds of reasons. There are so many programs that go on here with uh, lectures and concerts and meetings and other times when the community gathers in relatively larger numbers um, to work together with each other, uh, either to learn from each other or to address issues of importance to our community and make Brattleboro stronger. So Fifty years ago, when the community came together and celebrated the opening of this building, I was five. Um, I have some memories, but they're pretty vague and pretty um, sapia, probably, I guess, of um, the old Brooks Memorial Library and going down the stairs into the children's area there. And, um, those are special memories for me, but, um, but not very vivid. Lots of great memories from childhood in this building upstairs. Um, but at that time, when this building was opening up uh, in 1967, and I was five, my dad was the town manager and he was approaching his 40th birthday. And it's a tremendous um, blessing to our family and I think um, it's a good fortune for our community that we have with us today, five days short of his 90th birthday, <laughs> Corky Elwell to tell us about how this building came to be. This project was started in the mid 1960s when the US government came calling with a request to purchase the original building to build a parking lot for the post office and the U.S. court. They made the town an offer they could not refuse. $170,000, you believe. Brattleboro has always been ahead of the curve, and this is another case where they were thinking early on, we're going to have to replace the original building, ultimately, and we need to be prepared for, for that day. So they did have a um, library consultant, Joseph Wheeler, come in and make recommendations as to 
what should be in a new library. His recommendation was that a library to replace the original facility underlined must be placed on Main Street and have a welcoming open front to patrons. His advice was followed and resulted in the outstanding facility that we have used for the past 50 years and hopefully for another 50 years. but I grew up in Marlboro, Vermont. And um, let's see, my best memories of the library are when I was a little kid, I made a plate during a plate making uh, event here. And I still have it. And it's one of the few things that survived my very rambunctious childhood. Um, and there was a reading contest. And over the summer, I read enough books to get entered in a drawing, and I won a gigantic stuffed koala that I named Mappy. And now my kids play with it uh, when I'm at my house. It's another thing that survived. And whenever I come across those things, I have very fond memories of my young days at the library. place about reading them was on those squishy things and sometimes I come here with my grandma and I like playing dress up. We're but and me and Gigi were like looking for Ewoks to see which one was in a book. Star Wars books. Star Wars books. What about the gingerbread houses? Oh we, we like uh, there's this glue strip we had to like, use graham crackers to make it, and like it was frosting to like stick it together and stuff. And what's your favorite thing about the library? Grayson, um, six, and uh, books. Which books? The I Spy books. My favorite thing to do at the library is read. What, what's your favorite book? Um, my favorite book, well, can I do a series? Sure. My favorite series is Big Nate. And why do you like that? It's comics and it's really funny. nostalgically about the stacks, the feel of a book, 
The little dusty paper smell that escapes when you first crack a volume open, and how we associate that with the unleashing of an idea. When I took out my very first book from the library, my name was entered on a library card removed from a sleeve in the back of the book. The librarian stamped it with a magnificent and fascinating date stamp, affixed cleverly to the end of her pencil. When I took out a book, I could see the names of all of the other people who had also read that book. One time, I saw my own mother's name on the card. Talk about time travel. A mother and a daughter consuming not just the same story, but the exact same book, turning the very same pages, decades apart. When my mother was combing through the stacks, I leafed through Green Eggs and Ham for the 4,000th time. And don't we hate that book? I really, I don't even like that book, but it is the book that unlocked everything for me. Finally, the words stopped swimming beneath the pictures, and I realized that each word corresponded with something specific. Children need books, and they need people in their lives to nurture their love of story. They need to understand that stories get made up and written down, and that the library is full of ideas and incident and glancing magical connections that happen across space and through time, like the one between my mother, my daughter, and me. Jean Walsh and I'm the reference librarian here at Brooks Memorial right now and um, what I love about this library is what I love about this community that um, there's a sense of people coming together there's um, this community completely gets what's special to me about libraries which is that um, that we share resources, you know, that we really pull together and that everybody gets to share our own wealth. Um, you know, we share it around and uh, people love to come here. They like to be in the physical space. We learned that as we were doing the renovation. And um, it just makes it a place where everybody can be themselves. And I think this is really true about Brattleboro. We kind of celebrate everybody's quirkiness and everybody's, you know, crazy ideas and, and brilliant ideas and stuff that they just try out and it's like, okay, well, all right, whatever, let's think it through again. And, and the library is like a place where that kind of thing can happen right from when little, you know, little kids first, you know, come through the doors all the way up. And um, a lot of my mes best memories about being at this library are amazing interactions with library patrons who trust me um, to help them with their questions and it's a, a community that's so curious people ask questions people use reference service people think about coming to the library for ideas and um, you know just I've had a lot of laughs with patrons through the years and that just makes me happy and my wish is more of the same for many many years to come my name is Elizabeth Tannenbaum. I live in Brattleboro, Vermont, and I work at the SIT Graduate Institute. And I have most recently been a member of the Library Board of Trustees and also a volunteer on several committees. So I guess that shows that I really love my library and want to make sure that it's successful. But I thought I'd tell you just a, a memory from my children's childhood. 
that I have two boys and when they were about three and six years old we took them to live overseas and we went to live in the South Pacific in Fiji and we walked into the library and there was absolutely nothing there and especially nothing for children and it made me appreciate so much everything that's available here and when we came back two years later I brought with me a a book of pictures of Fiji which I gave to the children's room because I thought oh it's this international focus is something that is really important in in the town of Brattleboro and while my children were going growing up they were here all the time looking at books doing research here and using the library for a variety of reasons and purposes and I too now constantly am coming to the library and have moved from just using it as a place to read books to a place to do research and to use a lot of the databases that are available. So I've been extremely happy with all of the changes and now with all of the beautiful new furnishings and carpets and things like that, it really is a friendly and welcoming place. Happy birthday library. My birthday is in September too, so we both have a kind of same birthday, although I'm a little bit older than this library building is, and I hope that the library continues for many, many more 50 years. Robert Stack in uh, Brattleboro, Vermont. I remember when I first came to town back in the 70s, we had a library out in West Brattleboro, and uh, I went out there and I used to come with my dog to the academy school, and uh, Arthur Lithgow's mother was a librarian at that time. And she loved my dog. I don't know what she thought of me, but she liked my dog. It was a beautiful Irish setter. And, um, and, and it was just very special. I just come up from, I just got out of service in 72 and I ended up moving to Vermont in 73, winter 73, 74, I think it was. Anyway, that, uh, I just remember that. It's just like going down to the little, little library, you know. And then, then of course, I started coming to town, but uh, that's what I liked. Uh, what's my favorite thing to do at the library? I, I look at all the new books. I go through all the new fiction and new nonfiction. I, I don't think there's many books in the back on the shelves that I have not looked at when they were new. Uh, even, the, even the classics I've gone back and read, so there's very few books in the back shelves I haven't actually looked at. Uh, I haven't read them all, but I've, uh, I've read a few of them. Uh, what is my birthday wish for the library? Oh, I just wish there's another. It's hard to know, another 50 years. Um, everybody said that computers and Kindles and would be the end of the book, uh, printed word. And it's, so far it's turned out not to be true. Um, I hope that there's always books. And there's always kids, and there's kids that get books. My name is Tim Butterworth. I'm from Chesterfield, New Hampshire. My children used to wait in this library in the children's room while I, until I could pick them up after school. But I wanted to tell a story about my grandfather. Um, he was living on, in Trenton, New Jersey and uh, hanging out with kind of some tough kids. And one day a policeman came around the corner and the other kids ran off, but my father, uh, John Lee Brooks, stayed there. My grandfather, that is, John Lee Brooks, stayed there to, and talked with the policeman. And the policeman told him he could do better things with his life and he should go to the library. So the next time his uh, father was drinking and making life miserable at home, he went down to the library which, uh, in Trenton, New Jersey and walked in the door and the librarian said, can I help you? And he said, I want a book. The librarian gave him uh, John, uh, the Grimm's Brothers Fairy Tales book and that was the first book he ever read. And then he uh, became a minister and then he went to Wesleyan College and survived through the Depression and I wouldn't be here today without that librarian and that policeman.
next giant step forward for library service came in 1886 when the wealthy Chesterfield, New Hampshire resident, George Jones Brooks, who had made his money in California after the gold rush, decided to leave another legacy of the town. In 1871, he had built the Brooks House. And later in his life, perhaps wanting more of a cultural legacy, he donated funds for the construction of, for the Brooks Library, which finally gave the Brattleboro Free Library a permanent home. Unfortunately, Mr. Brooks died on the morning of the dedication, January 27, 1887, with an incomplete draft of his remarks left on, his, on the desk. But they did read the remarks at the dedication. And in 1911, large bequest of artwork and funds to build an addition came from the Wichenden Mass resident and Brattleboro summer resident, Ms. Henrietta Loud. The art collection is the foundation of the library's fine arts collection, which we still have today. Many pieces of the collection are out for public view, but the collection and stories have been relocated to a new space on the mezzanine. More bequests came to the library in the following years, and in 1927, a suitable children's room was finally opened. And it was not until 2017 that a suitable young adult space came to the building. <laughs> Joseph Wheeler, the esteemed library consultant that Corky mentioned, who guided the work on the building, made his views known in a study commissioned by the trustees of 55 entitled Library Building Problems in Brattleboro, Vermont, a study and recommendation. Among the issues noted with the current building, Wheeler stated that this new library needed to have, quotes, big windows on the sidewalk, entrance on the sidewalk, and easy access to all the books. While the old Brooks Library was like a church or a temple, the new Brooks Library was constructed to be more of a people's house. For some time, staff would joke it was proud of living room. I would like to talk a little bit about this building and its personality, because it does have one. You know, working here for 37 years, I came to believe that this place was haunted. <laughs> Let me relate a few examples. So the library has a burglar alarm, right? We have a security system because of all the art. For some reason, usually on a Sunday morning around 10 a.m., the phone would ring, and I could see the caller ID was from Alarm Central. And I would utter a fitting Sunday expression like, oh Jesus, it's the library calling again. And sure enough, I would quickly hop in my car and meet the police officer at the front door. After disarming the system, the officer and I would walk around the floor to see if someone had broken into the building. There would be no one around. The alarm registered that a PIR, passive infrared device, you can see them around the corners of the building here, was set off, but the security alarm company never could track what was setting it off. The possibilities ran the gamut from spiders crawling over the devices to what I believe, ectoplasmic apparitions <laughs> disturbing the field. At one point, I thought it could have been the ghost of old George J. Brooks haunting the place because his 1886 library had been demolished in the expansion of the post office. That remains to be proven. Then there was a time the alarm went off when he actually discovered a real burglar. The phone rang, and of course, it was Alarm Central. As usual, the officer and I began our walk through the building, and lo and behold, the photocopy machine's coin reservoir had been pried opened, and there, coins were spread all over the floor. Over to the side of the copier, there was a young man pretending to be asleep. <laughs> he opened one eye to see myself and the officer standing above him. As I recall, he tried to plead the Rip Van Winkle defense, but the officer hauled him off to the police station at the municipal center. That was the last I heard of him. Someday we'll meet and you will dry up all my tears and whisper sweet little things in my ears. Hi, and a kiss of me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who knows how old this library is today? How old is the library? It's 50! <laughs> good for 50. So today is our 50th birthday, and it's really today. I'm Maeve. We're from Dummerston, Maeve, Tucker, and Dylan. And I know one of my favorite memories was coming here as a little girl with my dad. And we would always, he was a huge reader, or still is, 
and he would go downstairs and he'd always check the new book section and I knew that it was the time where I just needed to be quiet because it was the library. And then we would come upstairs afterwards and I would get to pick out a book and that was our Saturday routine and that's my best part was coming here with my dad. I think my wish would to see it continue to um, grow and enrich our, our community. Uh, this teen room is new this year and I think that's a great addition. Um, the children's floor is uh, an irreplaceable space for the youth of our, of our community and so I, I hope to see it just continue to grow and um, continue to give back like it does. What is your favorite thing about the library, do you know? I like reading books. Uh-huh. And what kinds of books do you like at the library? Mm. Like, what's your favorite stuff? Is there like a series that we like to get at the library that they helped us find? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well why don't you tell them what you like? The human body books. I'm Nancy Tierra and I live here in Brattleboro. And my favorite memory about the library is bringing my honorary nephew, Sam and Pete to the children's room. And uh, many Saturdays while they were growing up. And being twins, it was really fun to watch them do different things in the library. And we would leave after, you know, an hour or two, and Pete would have checked out almost every time the maximum number of books and I think that was like 33 or 34. And the librarians would have to get out plastic bags and we would go out with these huge plastic bags of books. And Sam would check out one, maybe two books. And he'd, he'd be, you know, just carrying his books and out he'd go. And that was just really fun, just to see how different they were. And the librarians and I, we really think between the two of them, they read every children's book in the children's section. My name is Misty and I live in Brattleboro with my daughter Eva and we've been coming to the library I would say since she was three. Um, we started with the rhyme time and that was a lot of fun and ever since then we have made a dedication to at least coming weekly, sometimes more often depending on the fun things like Lego Palooza. Um, the kids really seem to enjoy that a lot. So I'm extremely thankful to have this wonderful building and the place um, for Eva because she's very imaginative. And they each have little spaces, beanbag areas, and always a craft. So it's wonderful for kids. And I know that my daughter in especially enjoys the um, atmosphere and the librarians very much. They're very friendly and kind. And will continue to come here as often as possible. Um, so Eva was probably two or three when we started doing rhyme time so my favorite memory is definitely just watching her have a book read to her by someone different and different voices and at that point I knew she was gonna love books. My name is Amity and um, I've been coming to this library for probably 12 years. Um, before I lived in town, I would I would get a membership so I could use this library anyway because I liked it so much. Um, and I think my favorite memory is probably um, one evening Lena and I were here and we had been here for hours and she really didn't want to leave and I was really hungry and as we were walking out after a struggle she said you know what I wish we could just live in the library and I think that was my favorite memory but really and truly I am thankful every day for the support that this library receives from you from the community and uh, from our benefactors that founded this library and both large and small and historic and more recent. I am thankful for our town officials 
who support this library, for our wonderful select board, um, and I see Tim Wessel is here, and, uh, and our other elected officials, and I think I saw Molly Burke here somewhere. So um, those people really give us that underpinning of support to make this library a place to thrive. Thanks to all of you for coming out on this gorgeous day to spend it at the library. So really, now all that's left to say is, wow.